Hello friends, welcome back to another video. In today's video, I'm going to be doing an in-depth review of my current notebook that I'm using for bullet journaling, which is the Archer and Olive B5 size Crescent Moon Dot Grid Notebook. So keep on watching if you're interested in hearing my thoughts on this notebook pros, cons, whether or not I recommend it, if I think it's worth the price, all of that good stuff. And without further ado, let's just get right into it. So this particular size and colorway or style is currently out of stock, but you can sign up to be on the waiting list or try a different color and design or size. I will leave the link below for this specific notebook if you are interested in it. But Archer and Olive has a huge selection of different colors and designs, so knock yourself out. I've been using this notebook for four months now. I started with it in the start of 2020, so I feel like I have a very good grasp of the features and I wanted to make sure to wait until I was really familiar with this notebook before doing a review because I wanted to give you the most helpful information possible. So this notebook sells for $35 US. It's made with 100% vegan materials. Mine has a crescent moon and four stars stamped in gold foil on a black linen hardcover. Now, I personally love the look and feel of the linen cover, but this fabric gets so dirty so easily. It picks up every single stray cat hair that's on my desk. Every dust particle is drawn to it. So definitely keep that in mind if you have animals living in your house or if you just in general don't like your things to look dirty, you will have to clean this very regularly for it to stay looking nice. The notebook has a pen loop, an elastic closure, two black bookmarks, and a back pocket. It also has the standard little contact information area inside the front cover. The pages are nice, crisp white. They are exactly the same shade as a standard piece of printer paper and 160 GSM. I personally find the pages almost give off a bit of a blue cast in real life because they are such a stark white, which depending on your preference, may be a pro or a con. I do really like a nice bright white. I'm not really a big fan of dark cream pages, but I know a lot of people prefer a warmer, more ivory tone. So keep that in mind. The pages have a 0.5 centimeter dot grid in a medium gray color. The dots aren't so light that they sort of disappear from view when you're looking at your spread, but they're also not as dark as dots in other notebooks I've tried, like Rodia comes to mind for darker dots. The pages also don't have any page numbers, which could be a deal breaker for you. It's not a deal breaker for me, but I do find it mildly irritating. The B5 journals are 33 by 47 as far as the dot grid goes, or 17 and a half by 25 centimeters. Here is a visual comparison for you between a standard A5 size notebook and the B5 size for anyone who has never had a B5. The journal lays flat when it's opened. I will say that these journals are hand stitched. So on certain pages, you can see the stitching very clearly. And there are also some pages that are glued together, making them more difficult or impossible to fully open and lay flat without actually folding one of the pages. I don't mind seeing the stitching at all. I would prefer to not have the pages that are slightly glued together because I do find them a little more difficult to use and they don't look quite as nice, but to a certain extent, that's just what comes along with making a notebook that will hopefully stay together in the long term, which I have found with this notebook. I do think it is very well made and it's held up really well. To me, other than the cover getting dirty easily, I haven't noticed any signs of wear at all on this notebook. After using it every single day for over four months now, so I can definitely say that I think the quality of this notebook is really up there. Now, the page number isn't listed anywhere on the website that I can find, but when I counted, I counted 80 dot grid pages, which to be fair, doesn't seem like a lot, 
But that being said, I've just started my fifth month in this notebook and I will definitely get at least six months in here, but I think it's likely I will even get up to maybe eight months into this notebook, which is pretty standard for me for a notebook. I haven't, I don't think, ever been able to fit an entire year in a single notebook. So while it seems like it doesn't have that many pages, it's actually managing my needs pretty well. I think a big aspect of this is the larger page size. Being in a B5 size notebook means that I can fit a lot more on a single page or on a single spread, which means I end up using less pages in total per month. It's also a great cat bed or chair, as my cats will attest. They find it very silky smooth and comfortable. Another reason for fewer pages is that these pages are so thick. They are 160 GSM, which I think is worth it. I prefer to have thicker pages that I can watercolor on. So if you're not typically using mediums that require a thicker page and you'd prefer to have more pages, then I would definitely recommend going with a lower GSM notebook, maybe 120 GSM or 110. There's a lot of options out there for you if you're looking for a slightly lower GSM notebook and in those notebooks, they're able to fit a lot more individual pages within the binding. Archer and Olive claims that their notebooks have no ghosting or bleeding due to the 160 GSM paper. So let's test that claim out by doing a thorough pen and paint test. I wanna start with pens. So I'm gonna go through and test out a bunch of fine liners and gel pens that I have on hand, like my Secura Microns, which are probably my most used fine liners. This paper is not coated and it absorbs ink really quickly, which means it does not smudge, which if you saw my review of my last notebook, which was a Scribbles That Matter notebook, or if you just watched me back then when I was still using it, you will know that smudging was my biggest gripe with that notebook. It was coated paper and it just drove me up the wall because I'm too impatient to wait 10 minutes for a pen to dry. So that was one of my favorite things about moving to this notebook is how quickly it absorbs the ink and you can basically run your finger over the ink as soon as you've written and it will be dry and won't smudge. And that is just incredible for me as an impatient bullet journaler. I really like using fine tipped gel pens in this notebook because they write so smoothly and because this paper dries so quickly, I don't have to worry about the smudging that normally comes along with using gel pens for your day-to-day -day bullet journaling. I decided to test out a Sharpie permanent marker just to see the results. I never use permanent markers in my bullet journal, but I wanted to show how it reacted. I also wanted to show how the Uni Posca paint pens work because I have used these many times in my bullet journal. Not just the black one, but also the white one. Along with my white Uniball Signo gel pen, these two white pens are the two I use most often to fix mistakes in my bullet journal. And they're both quite a good match. I would say the Uni Posca paint pen is a slightly better match because it dries matte and it's slightly cooler toned. So it just matches the paper that little bit more. I find the gel pen is a touch brighter with a little bit of a warmer undertone. So it contrasts the paper a little more. It also dries with a bit of a shiny finish, which means it stands out more as you move the page. I also wanted to test out various gold markers because as y'all know, I've been doing a lot of gold in my bullet journal lately. So I wanted to show some of the different pens and markers I've been using to achieve that gold look. Starting with my absolute favorite, which is the Pentel Sunburst Gold Gel Pen. This is my favorite, favorite gold pen of all time. It has a beautiful gold tone. It's really easy to use. Unlike other gold gel pens I've used, it doesn't sort of fluctuate in its metallicness. It doesn't go from super metallic to basically just flat yellow to back to metallic within a single stroke, which is something I've noticed with the Pentel Slissy, which is the one I was using before I found the Sunburst. I definitely prefer the Sunburst over the Slissy as far as Pentel gel pens go. I also really like the Faber-Castell Metallics Heart of Gold 
gold marker. It's definitely a little bit of a duller, darker gold, but it's a really nice marker to use, especially as a base for my fine tech watercolors, which I will be testing on the paint page opposite. I also tested the Uni Posca paint pen in gold, which I will say is my least favorite Uni Posca paint pen I've ever used. I really like these Posca pens, but the gold is just such a dud. It's not metallic at all to me and it doesn't work very well and you'll see it was not coming out. I had to go over it multiple times for it to even really show up and you'll see it ended up bleeding through the paper and it just generally I would not recommend at all if you're looking for something gold. Go with anything other than this Posca paint pen. Every other color of the paint pen I've used has been great but this gold just it's not it. I also tested the Pilot Super Color Permanent Marker in gold. This is another alcohol-based marker. And I thought, why the heck not? I'll test out a mild liner and a Crayola Super Tip, as well as my Tombow dual brush pens. They all work fine. As far as the dual brush pens go, they do not blend at all. As I've said, this paper is very dry. It absorbs very quickly, which means you just don't even have time to do any blending at all with the Tombows before it's too dry. And if you try to blend, as I did here just to demonstrate, you'll see it ends up bleeding through the paper. So this is not the type of paper to use if you want to blend Tombows on the paper. It holds up to Tombows fine if you're just writing with them or drawing with them, but as soon as you try to blend them together on the page, you're going to have issues. I'll show you the results of these in a second, but before we do that, I want to do the paint test side. So I'm gonna be using my Winsor & Newton Cotman watercolors. I will say this paper holds up to watercolor really, really well, which is one of the things I like best about this paper. Even still, this is not watercolor paper. So you still have to be careful about how much water you use. I've seen a lot of people commenting on my videos and Instagram posts asking me how I'm able to use watercolor in my notebook because they have an Archer and Olive and they haven't been successful using watercolor. And of course, I'm not there with you. I don't know exactly what you're doing. I don't know what your results are or what techniques you're using, but I will say I've had the most success using the least amount of water possible. When you only use the bare minimum amount of water, you end up with barely any buckling or ghosting and no bleeding whatsoever. As soon as you use a little bit more water, as I did here where I blended these two shades together, you'll get a little bit more buckling and a tiny bit more ghosting once it dries, but still no bleeding. And then if you use a lot of water, as I did here as an example, you'll get quite a bit of buckling and ghosting and you'll see certain areas will have some bleed through. So I would definitely recommend testing out the paper and playing with it before you jump fully into making art or doing a spread with watercolor in your notebook, whatever notebook you have, because I definitely find even with watercolor paper, if you use too much water, you will get buckling and potentially bleed through. It's just a fact of using watercolors. So those are my two cents on this. I, again, don't know the situation for people who are struggling with watercolor in their Archer and Olive notebooks. Maybe there's something wrong with your notebooks. Maybe they're defective. I have no idea. But those are just my sort of tips or impressions from myself using this notebook for watercolor for the past four months. I also wanted to show my Fine Tech pearlescent colors because a lot of you have asked about these. These are the three shades I've been using this year in all of my spreads. And as you can see on their own, they are quite transparent and it's pretty hard to build them up to a consistent finish. I find that even if you use a whole lot of paint, they usually dry a bit patchy, which is why you'll see in my setups, I really prefer to use my Pentel Sunburst gel pen to start or even the Faber-Castell Heart of Gold marker and then let those fully dry and go over them with the gold fine tech because this way you are guaranteed the opacity and then you can use a little bit less of the paint and it can just act as a nice topper for that super shiny, metallic, really rich finish. And here you can see the results. 
as you can see, the Sharpie permanent marker bled through pretty significantly as would be expected. This paper is not meant for alcohol-based markers and the Uni Posca paint pen in gold bled through in the areas that I had to go over a couple times to get it to show up. You'll also see that the Tombow dual brush pen bled through in the areas that I tried unsuccessfully to blend them together after they had already dried in an instant on the paper. Again, for the watercolor, you can see that there's a touch of bleeding on the watercolor test where I used lots of water. Using less water led to just a little bit of buckling and a touch of ghosting, and the minimal water led to no perceptible buckling or ghosting at all. So on to my overall thoughts. I will say I have been really impressed by this Archer and Olive notebook. I had really high expectations and for the most part they have all been met. I would definitely use an Archer and Olive notebook again as my personal bullet journal and I would also recommend it to any of you, especially if you use your Bujo in a similar way that I do. I think you will really really like this notebook. I know the price is more expensive than some other bullet journal notebooks out there, but I would say that the price is fair when you consider the quality of these notebooks. They are really, really beautifully made, and the designs and colors are really well thought out and aesthetically pleasing. I would say the dry paper is both a blessing and a curse. I love that it doesn't smudge. Honestly, that is my favorite thing by far about this notebook, but I do dislike not being able to blend a little more easily, not having a little bit more leeway, a little more time before paint or ink dries to kind of play with it a little bit. So again, consider this if you are looking into this notebook. That's something you really have to think about. How do you personally use your notebook? And if you want more leeway, if you want more time to be able to play with whatever medium you're using, you may want to go with a notebook with coated paper that gives you that time. I also think page numbers would be a nice addition. I don't rely on page numbers, so it's not a deal breaker for me, but I do like to be able to have them just for reference. And I know there are a lot of people who really use page numbers quite consistently in their bullet journal. And that is an added time suck to have to go through and add page numbers, either when you first get the notebook or as you go along. So again, a potential con there. As I said though, overall, I am really impressed by this notebook. I think it's really great. It holds up to a wide variety of mediums really well and I would definitely recommend. So again, I've linked the specific notebook in the description box. It is currently sold out, but you can sign up to be on the pre-order list. They also have a bunch of other sizes and designs and colors for you to check out. I'm not affiliated with Archer and Olive in any way. Those are not affiliate links. I paid for this notebook with my own money. So these are just my thoughts. I hope this was helpful. I hope I gave you all of the information you were looking for. If you have any further questions that I did not answer, please leave them down below in the comments and I'll be happy to go through and answer every single one as long as I know the answer to your question. And with that, that brings us to the end of this video. So thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you're all doing well. Don't forget to like this video if you found it informative and helpful. These notebook reviews always take quite a bit of time and research to put together. So let me know with a like if you want me to continue to review notebooks as I get my hands on them. I wanna take a moment to thank my patrons for their support. Extra special thanks to our newest patrons, Rosie, Adorn, and Seagal. Welcome all of you to the squad. We're so excited to have you. If you at home wanna join the squad, feel free. There's a link in the card and in the description box down below. And I will see you all very soon in my next video. Bye friends. If you're looking for something else to watch, may I recommend you check out this video or this video.